Hi, I'm Mary Kupsinski, the CEO of Regolytics. Welcome to this week's Regulatory Roundup. This week, there were 1,077 alerts from 201 unique U.S. regulators, and 349 had to do with coronavirus. The regulator of the week is regulatory associations. I really don't know what the right word or categories these are, so if you have an idea, please put it in the comments. I'm talking about clubs that only regulators can join, like for instance, the National Association of Insurance Commissioners or the Conference of State Bank Supervisors. Anyway, this week, the North American Securities Administrators Association issued a stark warning to Congress to guard against proposals that weaken securities laws. Additionally, the organization came out with a model act for whistleblowers that state securities regulators can adopt into their local laws. Possibly related, possibly not, the OCC wrote its own letter to the National League of Cities, the U.S. Conference of Mayors, and the National Association of Governors urging mayors and governors to consider the adverse impact of long-term regional economic shutdown on the nation's banks when making their decisions. The topic of the week is equal protection. The news has been really rough this week. I'm sure it's no surprise to any of you that a number of regulatory bodies issued statements, some focused on the continued need to take measures to ensure equality, and others, including the White House, focused on looting and lawlessness. I generally try to keep this regulatory update focused on the fact that rules are passing or not passing, but in this case, I want to comment on a piece written by former President Barack Obama. He said that one of the great ironies is that the most important elections to win when it comes to police brutality are the local elections, state, townships, counties, etc., and that it's those elections that have the smallest turnout. And I just wanted to add, as someone who reads pretty much every regulation that comes out in the United States every day, that I'm impressed by the sweeping power of the state and local authorities. I'm also impressed to see them wake up and flex their muscles for the first time in many years because of the pandemic. So to that end, I encourage the state and local regulators to regulate the change you'd like to see. I also want to point out that federal agencies do have a lot of power to control as well. And it's typically one person, the president, who empowers those people to run those agencies. We've discussed the Community Reinvestment Act a number of times. It's a regulation that came from the civil rights unrest of the 1960s, and it mandates all banks to prove that if a bank issues a loan, that it's distributing capital to roughly the same diversity level as the local population. Well, see last week, the OCC made an interesting move to change the CRA without the agreement of the FDIC or the Federal Reserve. I've also observed here that almost no one writes comment letters. So if you don't like the changes to the CRA, it would be pretty interesting if you started writing the OCC because I'll bet you they would listen. To all my friends and colleagues, employees, viewers, friends of colleagues, employees, and viewers, I see the statistics, I see the unfairness, I see the feeble attempts to combat the statistics, including statistics about myself as a women-led business. I've personally witnessed a taxi driver stop to pick me up and then drive away when he realized I was calling a cab for my black male employee. I see states using the word diversity and inclusion more and more, and it does give me hope, but it's just not enough. As a leader, as a business owner, I feel very sick and unsure of what I'm supposed to do. Uh, I do know regulation pretty well, and I do report on it. So in my one feeble attempt to offer something that might give you a little bit of hope, I thought you would like to know that last week, the FDC busted a New York City car dealership that discriminated against African American and Hispanic car buyers. It's small, it's by no means a solution, but it was a $1.5 million fine. And it tells me that there's some good people inside our agencies that are working hard to bring justice where it deserves to be. So that's something. 
It's still not enough though. We can all do better and we should. Moving on to the usual report for those of you following blockchain. The SEC fined a blockchain services company for conducting a unregistered initial coin offering of digital asset securities. Bitclave raised over 25 million by selling its consumer activity tokens to approximately 9,500 investors. Without admitting or denying the SEC's findings, Bitclave agreed to pay disgorgement of the 25 million prejudgment interest and a penalty of $400,000. Box Exchange and the SEC are still at it with the Boston Security Token Exchange. More amendments this week, more open comment periods. Maybe it'll finally get off the ground. For those of you following LIBOR, ARC, Fanny, and Freddie all published playbooks on how to manage the LIBOR transition. Also, ARC extended the comment period for its student loan spread adjustment consultations. For those of you following climate-related rules, Treasury and the IRS provided regulations to help businesses claim credits for carbon capture. For those of you following SROs, a number of exchanges reopened their trading floors, including CBOE and the New York Stock Exchange. In our find tracker this week, we saw a private equity shop, Aries Management, get a 1 million SEC fine for failures to follow its own policies in regards to material non-public information. The Texas Securities Board busted a third Craigslist scammer who was trying to get investors to invest in his video vlog. He was fined $26,000. And finally, a payments processor was fined by the FTC for ignoring clear signs that its customer was running an online scam. In other federal news, the SEC extended the relief it granted transfer agents. It also proposed big changes for business development companies and other closed-end investment companies. And a number of SEC commissioners spoke at the Fixed Income Market Structure Advisory Committee meeting, including Jay Clayton, who mentioned that in addition to all the topics being discussed, there was international interest on revising rules around rating agencies. The SBA and Treasury answered additional questions about loan forgiveness and the Paycheck Protection Program. So if you got a PPP loan, take a look and see if you can keep those employees hired just a little bit longer. That's what it's for. Treasury, OCC, the Fed, FDIC, and the NCUA provided interagency guidance on credit risk review systems. The final guidance discusses sound management of credit risk, a system of independent ongoing credit review, and appropriate communication regarding the performance of the institution's loan portfolio to its management and board of directors. And in state news, the California Department of Insurance expanded the order for insurance companies to partially refund premiums amid the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. This has already happened in many states, especially when it comes to auto insurance refunds. I see these because most state regulators require insurance companies to register rate changes and rate changes can include refunds. So California is not unusual. And certainly when it comes to coronavirus testing charges, many of the states did order insurance companies to cover those costs. States across the map are reopening Sports teams are practicing, daycares, and thank goodness, hair salons are reopening. I always run out of time, but I do want to mention that student loan discussions have definitely been picking up in frequency in the state and federal alerts, and I foresee it being a topic of the week here pretty soon. That's it this week for Regolytics US Alerts. Join us every Wednesday morning on LinkedIn, and for the longer version, go to YouTube. In the meantime, stay safe and healthy and send me a better word for regulator of state regulators. Regulatory club? Reg club? I don't know what it's called, but I need a name. Help me out.